Okay. Then I I would like to uh, begin uh, this event. Okay. Please, so please. so um, dear colleagues, this is the second lecture of this semester of onomastics online, and as you know. One of the main purposes of this series is to emphasize the, the interdisciplinary nature of dealing with names. That's why we had speakers from the fields of geography, spatial cognition, second language teaching and learning, cognitive linguistics, and so on. And we also would like to demonstrate the practical aspects of dealing with names. And today's speaker is going to broaden our horizon from this approach, from the approach of terminology. I'm very happy to welcome Christian Galinsky, the director of InfoTerm. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to give an insight into the field of terminology. I'm also glad to welcome the chair of this event, the Patame Hagbayari, one of the member of the ICOS board. Now the floor is yours. I wish a wonderful time for us. Yeah, thank you very much for this uh, wonderful uh, introduction. Um, I only want to, to add uh, one remark. Uh, terminology has haunted me since I started studying. <laughs> and then I, I did uh, uh, a uh, dissertation on the, uh, on the educational system in Japan around uh, 1850. And the, the biggest problem was, you won't believe it, names, proper names of school books, of schools, of teachers, etc. Yeah. And of course, also terminology. And then later I had a, a company, a language service. And again, it was for uh, was uh, focusing on Asian languages. And at that time, there were hardly any dictionaries. So I had to go two or three times a year to East Asia and to, to buy uh, dictionaries there available, uh, not only to, uh, to two or three or five, but uh, if possible, hundreds. <laughs> So um, uh, terminology and also onomastics has uh, uh, played uh, quite an important role in my professional life. Um, my intention was to bring together the two fields, yeah, to, uh, um, to bridge um, uh, terminology and uh, on, uh, onomastics, and let's see uh, how we can better understand each other. Uh, So this is the, the broad um, uh, the overview. Uh, the next one will be uh, about uh, the next slides will be about uh, human communication and uh, terminology. Uh, and important there is human communication uh, takes case takes uh, part uh, in takes place in different uh, different levels, uh, different types of information. Uh, and um, usually uh, we in terminology make the difference between specialized uh, language and general language. Um, and then uh, the, because of uh, ICTs, information and communication technologies, you have uh, unstructured um, information and um, uh, structured information. Of course, um, texts and media, uh, multimedia and so on, they are also structured, but uh, syntactically structured, uh, whereas the database uh, entries are uh, semantically structured based on uh, uh, structured uh, based on metadata. And of course, uh, do you see the cursor? Yes. Yeah. Of course, the uh, proper names and other and uh, names in general occur also. At this level here, structured data, that's the point of view of, um, uh, of uh, computer science. It, uh, it's also structured information. Uh, that's the point of view of information documentation and li uh, librarianship. And it, uh, uh, but in general, uh, we can say it's structured content. It's the same and it's used um, um, interchangeably in the literature. Uh, to give it a concrete example, if you see a text like this here, um, could you imagine what the text is about? All terminology has been removed. So probably not, not even the topic what it is about. If it's like that, uh, I think you can imagine that it must be something with a 
with the uh, with the teeth and um, uh, the jaw the jaw bones. Yeah? Uh, a, an expert could grasp already what it is about the topic, the general topic. Here uh, you find the terminology plus an image. If you are a non-expert, you would have to look up nearly everything uh, in um, here in the terminology, except maybe fracture, which is um, or also a general language um, uh, word, as well as a special uh, term, and uh, teeth and uh, and so on. So uh, to some extent, you get to grasp what it is about. And only when you uh, when you have the full text. Uh, with um, uh, and the and the um, the non-verbal information, then an, an expert would fully understand what it is about. And in this uh, in this case, uh, what you see here as um, um, mandible or uh, uh, denture and so on, um, they are they are entries in should be entries in a terminology database, and there they are the 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 most condensed information that you can uh, imagine. All these texts about deranged occlusion together, maybe thousands of pages, and even uh, becomes that even becomes uh, undigestible for for experts of the field. So the basics of uh, terminology science are that um, our brain or we with our senses, we are perceiving and then conceiving things through our son senses by our brain. And there the fundamentals are um, we perceive objects uh, and from there uh, we our brain uh, constructs concepts uh, which are in in uh, in epistemology also called first order representation of objects, and they have to be represented, otherwise they cannot be communicated. And that's a, a drawback of ICTs. Uh, they don't have concepts; they have representations, and they try to uh, to uh, uh, process uh, meanings by using representations. Okay, but here we are already. In the uh, in philosophy, and all that is increasingly uh, supported by technology. And you can imagine um, that communication among people, if you don't think about the same thing, the same object, uh, it's difficult to com communicate. If uh, on the right hand side uh, the lady says mouse and she thinks about uh, an animal, and uh, on the left side, uh, a uh, a partner or a machine uh, takes mouse and uh, thinks about the computer mouse. There's no understanding possible. Sorry if that is a bit trivial for you. So, um, uh, that led to the uh, terminological triangle or semiotic triangle where you have um, objects, different objects. Uh, the mouse, different mouses, computer mouses. Uh, in our brain, we form a concept, and then we need. In the past, they said term. That was um, uh, uh, this was developed largely in uh, the field of applied linguistics. Um, then, it was found out uh, that term is not enough because you have a lot of non. As you have already seen in the text, nonverbal uh, representations. So we came up with the from term to designation, and more general, uh, we need the designative concept representation for, for short, sort of a short um, way of naming uh, of naming the concepts referring to objects. So there are several such triangles, and as I mentioned already. Um, the object uh, is the, the, the concept that uh, refers to an object is the first order representation and uh, the, the way to represent uh, a concept is uh, by means of a symbol or a designation and that is second order uh, representation. Um, 
I will make some breaks in between. So if you have uh, uh, questions or so, uh, we can have questions and then I continue uh, going further into detail. Is that okay for you? For sure, yeah, please. If anybody has a question, yeah. please take the opportunity to ask your question. Is there any- Otherwise, otherwise I will ask a question. <laughs> okay. Please, then could you please again clarify the difference between representation and designation? Um, we were, where were we? Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the the representation is very gen gener gen general, and in the, in the computer science, representation actually is uh, uh, is a sort of generic representation of uh, a concept. And today, and that I will come to that later. Uh, more and more also the presentation that means the term as it is written yeah or a symbol as it is there with maybe including uh, uh, italics letters or a mixture of um, letters and uh, uh, and numerals some underlines uh, sometimes uh, in pharmaceutics is important if in a name in a term there is a bold letter and things like that that is presentation. And today, more and more, we have to make a difference between representation and presentation. Uh, and I put here designative concept representation because a definition is also a, a representation, yeah? But it, it is a descriptive representation. And you need both, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, is that further questions? If not, continue. So, an object is uh, any part of the perceivable or conceivable world. Uh, world. By the way, to come to those definitions or explanations, it took tens of years of discussions between uh, people from computer science, uh, philosophy, applied linguistics, information and documentation, etc. So, uh, um, there is quite a, a long uh, um, long time uh, development behind all of that. What I'm presenting here, uh, and I, I'm I'm sure I've I've read a bit um, about uh, onomastics. It's the same in your field. Uh, what is interesting is that concepts also are immaterial objects, mm -hmm. as when you think about, let's say, society. Uh, you cannot touch it. Uh, but it exists in in our brain or family, yeah, uh, family as a as a general term uh, of, um, representing the the concept of of family. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's an immaterial object actually. Yeah, and uh, the representations are um, materialization uh, in the form of. Um, Rep they are objects. The representations also are objects. And the machine needs to know in which font you, you put the term, uh, in which color you put it, yeah, in which size you put it. So they are becoming objects. So it's a sort of how to call how, how that is called. It's a it's a system there, uh, and uh, one depends on the other. The concept is uh, a unit of thinking made up of characteristics. As such, it is a unit of knowledge, as we usually see it. Uh, it's not bound to particular languages. So from the outset, it's um, concept-oriented and language-independent, our the, the terminology approach. Uh, and uh, that means you can, uh, in a terminological entry, you can uh, add any number of languages if you, uh, if you need or want. And if it's... Um, uh, if it is uh, communicated, if the concepts are communicated, they also become, uh, through the representations, they become units of communication. But I think that is quite uh, also the same with, uh, uh, with names, proper names. So the term mouse 
is a linguistic is a linguistic expression, uh, but the generic is designation, and designation is any representation of a concept, and that can be verbal or nonverbal, and nonverbal. Uh, is not only spoken or written and then uh, uh, and uh, maybe in, f in the form of a visual uh, representation it can be any it can be in sign language it can be in uh, video form uh, uh, even there's a new standard um, uh, under development where you uh, where uh, the varieties of um, language modalities are all included such as um, that you can drum information, drumming, yeah? you can sing information. It all happens in, in uh, some societies. Okay, so, uh, but I should not go too much into detail. A term may consist of uh, one or more words. It can also be a mixture of uh, verbal and nonverbal um, uh, elements. And here you have a wonderful example uh, for different names of the same object this uh, chemical compound in a simple way is amylsulbrome and then you have uh, uh, the the standardized uh, chemical names uh, standardized by UPAC and so on in English uh, French and then uh, by CAS you have a structural uh, or spheric formula uh, and then here you have an, an, um, a uh, summarizing formula and uh, there is a, a unique identifier. 60 million, more than 60 million substances is the figure already 15 years ago. Uh, and uh, lately, three years ago, I met um, um, a chemical expert in, uh, in one of uh, the, the conferences, and she said, by now we have already more than 120,000 um, medical substance, identifiable medical uh, substances. So it's it's a huge field. It's also a nomenclature, and I think uh, in onomastics you also deal, I guess, uh, with um, nomenclatures. But here, in, in uh, they they are also part in in terminology. Uh, in the past, uh, we uh, defined that uh, there are three types of designations, terms, symbols, and appellations. Uh, because that was uh, what 20 years ago, uh, the experts in terminology did not well know the difference between appellation and uh, uh, and proper name. And today, uh, in ISO 10, um, 8, 1087, uh, it's defined as uh, a, uh, uh, that it, a designation can be a term, and a term can include appellations, but uh, a designation could also be a proper name or a symbol. And here you see uh, where our fields overlap, terminology and, onomas uh, and onomastics. If proper names are um, used in uh, scientific technical um, uh, environments or contexts, then they are, they are also, um, they can also be handled in, uh, in terminology databases as entries. A symbol is a designation that represents a concept by non-linguistic means. Um, and there we have uh, the problem to uh, make the dis distinction between uh, abbreviations or abbreviated forms like IBM or um, Excel or uh, United Nations, UN yeah, or USA. And then symbols that you can't maybe read uh, but actually, they are um, uh, you 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 cannot um, uh, you cannot uh, get immediately the link uh, to what they are representing uh, to which concept they are representing. And here you have a nice um, a nice example null hypothesis, and it's a slanted it's an italic H and a zero. Yeah. So you are also in symbols. You have combinations of verbal nonverbal uh, elements. And it, it was a, a product um, a product master, product data master management that uh, clarified uh, the distinctions between appellation and, uh, at least for us, yeah, and uh, proper names. 
maybe in the monastics it, uh, it was uh, uh, much clearer already uh, tens of years ago. An appellation is a term that is applied to a group of objects whose uh, relevant properties are identical. So if you have uh, an iPhone uh, model so and so, and there are thousands of these uh, uh, models, so it's more or less identical, and then uh, the iPhone, uh, this um, uh, the, the name for that iPhone model is an appellation. And um, in a very primitive way, I must admit, uh, a proper name is defined as a designation that represents an individual object. And there is something uh, I think that uh, we should collaborate more in the future because uh, it needs a much more detailed uh, way of, uh, of dealing with uh, proper names in terminological databases. Even in terms, you may have all kinds of uh, extra linguistic uh, presentational features like style, underline, hyphens, and whatsoever. Uh, I, I skipped that. And then if you look into definitions, you also have nonverbal ex um, uh, elements. And I can later show you uh, a, an example where a, um, um, a graphic, uh, a nonverbal representation, a uh, complex representation can even replace a definition, which was a no-go uh, in theory of terminology uh, 30, 40 years ago. They, they were say, experts were saying a uh, nonverbal representation never can um, uh, replace a, de a definition, a verbal definition. But there are many fields where um, our language is not fit for defining uh, com a complex um, concept. Okay. There's one question for later. Can you imagine that um, uh, proper names could be uh, represented non-verbally and in which kinds of uh, forms? Uh, I will show that later show uh, examples. And um, uh, so far, let, let's have a, a small break if there are any questions before we continue. Was that too, too theoretical? Katalin says no. Oh. Shall I continue? Please, yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, structure contents in, in uh, computer science is informational content that has been broken down and classified using metadata. Uh, what is missing here, what is missing here is that those metadata also refer to semantics, to some semantic, uh, to meaning. Yeah? Uh, you also use metadata for text or multimedia, for films, etc. But they rather refer to a, a syntactical structure. And there's a uh, there's a paradox. If you have a huge, let's say, uh, term, in a terminology database, one entry hundred in hundred languages, or the the European uh, Commission uh, European Commission database um, with uh, twenty eight languages, yeah, uh, it looks for uh, for a linguist or uh, every non-expert person, it looks very complex. Lots of information, lots of, uh, yeah, lots of information on if you print it out and so on, or, or on the screen. But it is, um, uh, but it is um, constructed according to strict rules and uh, highly consistent metadata. So it's not complex for, for a programmer. For a programmer, it's trivial. If there are rules, uh, the rules can be programmed and then even if it if there's lots of information, um, it becomes uh, easy to program. Yeah. Uh, difficult are, is language where, where you have lots of uh, variation. Uh, this is a, an example where I want to show that even in no, non-verbal 
uh, uh, representations or presentations, you can have synonyms, graphical synonyms. This is already old uh, from a project um, in safety called in safety in traffic informatics. And uh, you have uh, you can have panels over the highway uh, where you have uh, motion um, or the, the train for the to go to the to the train, uh, leave the highway uh, next exit or something like that. Yeah. And what that shows, uh, they call traffic science concepts. And they call the uh, elements of uh, traffic science, it's morphology. So what you have, uh, if, uh, the, if, they, if you have uh, nonverbal representations which are composed in a sy systematic way, it's quite uh, parallel to uh, linguistic phenomena. Uh, and uh, of course they have a name, and the name uh, is different in uh, different countries, uh, but also they they may have a slightly different uh, presentations according um, to the country. There is one representation that is fixed in in an international convention on uh, on uh, convention on traffic signs, but it may uh, vary in uh, different uh, countries. And of course. Uh, we don't have traffic uh, uh, signs in in um, Austria that show kangaroos that you have only in Australia, <laughs> and um, so there are additional traffic signs which are not necessarily international uh, harmonized. Here it's just an example of um, uh, that you may add um, uh, a phonetic information, but to but Tech, uh, today's technology, um, more and more, you find that also in the internet, in the various uh, uh, dictionaries that you find there, the pronunciation, yeah, and the pronunciation be can be have variants English, uh, English, British English, uh, American English, and so on. Motion in manuals can be displayed graphically. This is something. Um, this is generic. There's a generic code for weaving, and there are th thousands of weaving patterns, and there no language would be um, uh, would be able uh, to to define that in such a way that you can immediately start weaving. So it, uh, it's much better to have um, a figure, uh, and then uh, you can implement that. And now I have uh, two examples. Uh, what is the real name, the unique name of the ship? Well, I made it easy for you. It's the it's IMO nine million something. I cannot read it well. Yeah, um, nine million seven hundred thirty. That's the unique name for that ship. And the unique name in uh, in every container is a code. There you have the, uh, composed of um, an element uh, representing the owner, a category, a serial number, and a check number. You have that the same you have for books, ISBN number, yeah, uh, international book uh, uh, st standard number, and so on. Yeah, there are hundreds of codes. Actually, some are graphical. Uh, some are um, uh, some are they look like um, like uh, uh, terms or so, uh, but it, actually they are non um, nonverbal. So, and if you uh, if you buy something having a barcode, um, and that barcode refers really to that object only, uh, then. It's also, it's the name of that object, of that product. So the um, technology uh, for, for, uh, forces us to, to rethink many things in our daily life. And then you, have, uh, then you have information that is composed of various codes and verbal and nonverbal. 
and can be multilingual like you see here. And, and here, I have, that's the example I wanted to show you. Uh, you have um, uh, the term lab, you have a definition for that, but then if it comes to uh, uh, subordinate concepts like overlap or zero lab, I think that the language uh, would fail uh, to define or describe it. So that you, you, need, you need the nonverbal representation uh, for that. And now I have some um, something to, to, uh, towards a, a generic approach. In collections of such elements, in dictionaries, in lexica about birds, about mushrooms, yeah, in uh, uh, there are there are thesauri uh, on technical terms, the thesaurus of um, of aviation, thesaurus of um, uh, space space aviation, and so on. Um, some call it uh, vocabulary, some call it dictionary, some call it ontology. Uh, in pro, uh, product uh, master data management, it's all catalogs, etc. The presentations are different, but if you analyze the metadata, you will find many similarities. And uh, uh, InfoTerm has been working in various projects, but also in standardization to bring those fields together to find out what are the similarities and could there be a sort of um, a generic approach for the representation of those different kinds of presentations so that we have at the bottom uh, a, um, uh, a harmonized uh, theory, harmonized uh, um, uh, methodological approaches and that we find, found out there is something already there, uh, and that is called the, the micro content approach. And um, but for that, we have to uh, overcome quite a number of um, of silos, traditions of thinking, traditions of uh, methodologies, and so on. Shall I make the small break here or? Does anybody have a question? Yes, please. Okay, I think so far so good. I did not hear anything, but... Uh, I mean, uh, it seems that nobody has questions. Ah, okay. It seems that so far so good. So yeah. please continue. Yeah. So, um, our field of terminology also is in a silo. Uh, what we call silo theory, the, silo of theories, si, si, uh, silo of approaches. And uh, we have to overcome that because technology is forcing us. Uh, and we cannot use technology uh, efficiently and effectively if we do not overcome the silos. This does not mean that we mix everything, uh, but we have to be more, uh, we have to differentiate things. Uh, the traditional lexicographical model is we have a word, multi-word uh, or, so, or a collocation or so, and they have, uh, the word can have many meanings. And, uh, and, and then within lexicography, you have uh, quite some different approaches. In terminology, you have the concept referring to an object as already explained, and there can be several terms um, naming the concept in descriptive terminology management. In terminology standardization, you try to reduce polysemy and uh, synonymy that you have one or two or sometimes three or more preferred terms and maybe one, two, three admitted terms. And then there are also deprecated term and that is called prescriptive uh, terminology management. But what is the need of um, industry? Industry needs content integration. And even more than integration, it's called today uh, content interoperability. Uh, and I, I will soon um, explain what, what the difference is. And content, uh, the industry also needs con content reusability across, uh, across systems. 
yeah, and also across time to reuse the same uh, content units. And even more so, also content repurposability. So that means that uh, that the terminology, for instance, can also be used uh, in for teaching. The uh, chemical terminology, and then you can teach um, uh, the field of terminology, at least for, uh, at the beginner's level. So that's repurposability. And for that, um, it's easiest, this um, interoperability is easiest if you take, there are many kinds of micro content um, entities, but if you take the concept based one, yeah, uh, concept based micro content entries, and they are based on one idea or concept that is the original uh, definition of uh, micro content. And then you see, actually, it's very near to terminology. But it includes also lexicography. If we have, uh, let's say, uh, pros, uh, the, um, what is a good, uh, just ship, yeah? Uh, ship has, in, in, has many meanings in, in, in general language. And if you mean uh, the ship that uh, um, that uh, is a, is a is a small boat or something like that, yeah, uh, you can have many uh, many words for it. So, it'll, but if you mean only the ships that go on sea that uh, that float on the sea, uh, then uh, you you are entering the field of terminology, and this is what then a concept based micro content uh, entity. Uh, to make that a bit more palatable, uh, in a project uh, it was um, um, it was distinguished between compatibility, uh, de facto standard compatibility, and then interoperability that each is interoperable, each element is interoperable with each other. Uh, but today we need a, a step further. We need comprehensive uh, content interoperability, that, which is including also that the theories are interoperable, the methodologies are interoperable, that the unification approaches are interoperable, and even standards become interoperable. Standards referring to the same uh, subject across different uh, committees. And maybe that is, um, uh, this one is a, a good uh, striking example. You may have lots of adapters with a plug and a socket, um and uh, and there is no no interoperability between those but here is one there's one element where the, that fits for all plugs for all sockets uh for all voltages not the high voltages but the, the normal everyday voltage and uh, there you have a sort of physical interoperability So what I showed in the very beginning with the text, in uh, in unstructured content, you find all kind of designations, all kind of de definitions, explanations. They are embedded in specialized text or other media. Our human brain can cope with that. That's a fantastic. Our human brain is um, really something extraordinary. But the for the ICTs for the for computers and software. It has to be made very, very explicit to the finest detail. Uh, and uh, uh, then as I try to explain in terminology that onomastics approaches are underdeveloped and uh, we need uh, a, a good collaboration uh, to uh, repair this uh, situation uh, of, um, of that gap between onomastics and terminology. So the future development is going in the direction of uh, uh, generic approaches to achieve more efficiency and effectiveness uh, and to bridge traditional theories, approaches, system design, etc. And it must include automastics because proper names today are used everywhere. Yeah? Uh, not only in passports and doc personal documents, uh, it's in architecture, proper names occur everywhere. And we have to overcome uh, the duplication of efforts and inefficiencies because uh, we don't have 
uh, that uh, generic approach. I see that I still have maybe uh, 10 minutes we can discuss. Uh, I first uh, thank you for your attention. I would like to, uh, to mention that uh, there is no knowledge here meant is uh, scientific technical knowledge without uh, terminology. I would like to add uh, also uh, if, um, if uh, not proper names are uh, properly included. And let me just in uh, less than a minute show you how important what I explained is in terms of money, yeah, of, uh, of financial uh, efficiency. If you have a manual, a traditional manual in paper, and you want to exchange in the text um, fastened by a steel three and half uh, inch threaded bolt, you want to exchange that by fastened by an aluminum uh, three and half uh, inch threaded bolt. It's not only that it must be in the, in, uh, in the same manual, if that is printed, it should not be in all printed copies, but then you may have different models where the same uh, end, the same entity occurs. So you have uh, different models and, um, and uh, in different um, media. in different languages. I make it short. So if, uh, and it has been calculated, uh, if you don't do it, then you have to uh, make the change in each model language and so on, yeah? And that takes time. Uh, and uh, so if you have, uh, let's say 10, uh, ten words, uh, copied in, into 10 books or other, other media, translated into seven languages. If you don't have a generic approach to do that um, according to the basic principle of content management, single sources and uh, resource sharing, then you have $160. Uh, and I think this is very low estimate. The figures are quite old and uh, today um, where you have um, uh, product master data management and things like that uh, with 20 languages, 50 languages and so on, the figures would be much higher. And then if you have a generic approach uh, to do one, maybe on the push of a button and you, you do that automatically, uh, the, the costs are one tenth, 10% 10 of the costs that you would have uh, when you would have to change it in every uh, media or so. So it has, in industry, it has an effect. Yeah. Uh, the, the European Commission has a huge uh, terminology database. Uh, they have a huge language service. Uh, before the, the, the last extension of the European Union from, I, was it 20 to 24 countries? Uh, they had about 2,700 uh, 2, uh, translators and terminologists. And now after the extension and after that, uh, the, the terminology database had been uh, expanded, extended towards other languages and uh, new uh, uh, languages have to be tr um, translated in the documents, etc. They have less uh, they have less translators, less terminologies. Today, they have only 2,000 coping with a multitude of millions of pages uh, of translation every, day, every, uh, every year. So, and they follow what I just tried to explain, yeah, that if you have generic approaches, uh, you really uh, save um, uh, finances, uh, duplic uh, duplication of, you avoid duplication of effort, and uh, everything becomes more efficient. And of course, it needs technology for that. So now I stop and I'm ready for uh, questions. Okay, thank you very much for such informative uh, lecture. Very valuable uh, contribution to our webinar. And we have time for questions if the audience 
questions? Okay, uh, Susan, uh, I really enjoyed the example that you provided us with uh, for the interoperability with, uh, with this uh, adapter. It's very comprehensible. And uh, now we know that uh, how it important, how it important is to have this uh, interoperability between different uh, domains uh, also. And your lecture was also a, a very valuable contribution to make uh, the bridge, as you said, bridge between uh, terminology and onomastics. And it, would, uh, it was a very uh, valuable start to uh, extend our cooperation. And we welcome to our terminologists to join us for our next uh, webinars and uh, to uh, contribute uh, to our uh, uh, fields. And okay, in chat, yeah. you have to... Okay, please, Alasse would like to... Uh, I also like the adapted example. Okay, yeah, adapter. Mm -hmm. uh, from the audience, uh, what... Did, did I manage to get the relation to onomastics clearly enough? Of course, I'm I'm not an onomastics expert. Yeah? I've read a yeah. few books um, in conjunction with our terminology standards, methodology standards, uh, but I'm not an onomastics uh, expert. But for an onomastic expert, is that uh, relation between terminology and onomastics, is that clear? One doesn't replace the other. We cannot mix it up, uh, but at least in databases, etc., we can have a, a generic approach uh, to to handle the respective um, entries. Please, Kathleen. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the excellent introduction. To terminology. Um, I have maybe a basic question, I don't know, but what are the points uh, that you take into account when 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 you start standardize a term or um, the terms of a concept? Um, first you have to do the investigation, yeah? Uh, is it one concept or is it several concepts uh, that are represented uh, by uh, by that term yeah mm -hmm. uh, and that is a sort of uh, it's a descriptive approach and then you find a literature you go into specialized literature uh, you collect uh, you take uh, you put, put uh, you get uh, some experts together of the field yeah uh, and first try to uh, to condense uh, or to uh, focus on let's say one one concept or or the different shade between that concept and other concept having the same term yeah and then in standardization and then you start aha uh -huh, we have that concept uh, let's find the most um, the most um, uh, proper definition for it uh, in that subject field and uh, are there uh, synonyms or other uh, other symbols, or uh, uh, if there are several, then which one is the preferred one, and which one is it bet is better not to be used? I have uh, even in our field in our technical committee, I can give you a bad example, so that is not only good examples but also a bad example. Um, if you have um, um, the term language variety nicely. Um, nicely defined but then in the standard you use all the time variety and variety has many meanings uh, and then uh, you you have part of that standard uh, accessible uh, in in uh, uh, in the iso uh, portal and users are going maybe into the text and then they 
they see sometimes it's a variety and sometimes a language variety. A user that, who is not familiar with the subject would be confused. So in standards, also then in the text, not only the terminology, but then also the text, you should always use the first preferred full term. So it's not only so it's not only uh, that that you try to reduce um, variation in the terminological uh, uh, entry, but also to apply it consistency all throughout uh, the standard. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are steps, and there are uh, there are there's a whole series of standards concerning uh, how to how to do terminology standardization. Okay. But there are also there's also the terminology summer school, and there uh, there are also um, uh, very nice introductions uh, to to, uh, to uh, terminology management, and I can provide you also with some um, inf information on such material if you are interested. Because standards, you know, in, instead of uh, uh, reading ten standards, you can also have it in a compact form. Mm -hmm. And and what if if the word is changing, and can terminology or or this terminology management follow these changes? I I don't know exactly, but um, I just know that the concept of, uh, for example, fruit was uh, different in in the Middle Ages in the different countries, uh, even today, and so. Um, but maybe this is a general term, so it's not the best example. But um, if if there is a change in in the general concept in 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 the society, um, terminology can continue this or or reflect this change. Yes, uh, the old the old systems could not cope with what we call diachronic uh, terminology development, yeah? Uh, the evolution over time. Mm -hmm. uh, the newer systems can do it, can do it. Uh, the problem is rather today how to organize that in a way that a uh, conceptual change over time uh, can, if possible, be uh, sort of recorded as soon as it occurs. Mm -hmm. As or it, it finds a a wider um, application, and that still is a problem. So it's it's rather an, an organizational problem, uh, and there are uh, we have cooperative uh, terminology management tools, um, but uh, the how to organize it and how to get uh, experts involved in such a way that they uh, that it, it becomes fun for them, yeah, uh, to contribute not only an obligation or so, that is still something uh, we have to work on. But mm -hmm. you are pointing to a very important, um, a very important issue. Oh. Thank you, thank you for your answer. Okay, I think the time is running out, but uh, I would like to take the last minute to remind the uh, audience uh, about the uh, a webinar that we will uh, will be held on twenty uh, fifth of October twenty three at uh, thirteen p.m. Uh, UTC time and Dr. Lasse Hemelianen uh, will give will uh, will will give a lecture about the name of the year uh, the year awards experiences from Finland. You are uh, invited, all of you are invited to this lecture. And Dr. Galinsky, th thank you once again for your very valuable uh, contribution to our uh, onomastic online uh, webinars. Uh, Katalin, do you have uh, something to say? Oh, no, I, I just would like to thank you, uh, Christian, again for this mm -hmm. excellent, uh, really informative and thought-provoking uh, introductory talk. Thank you, and yeah. and uh, good luck with the cooperation Thank you. because yeah. Thank you all of you for participating. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.
thank you very thank much you. everybody and bye see bye. you soon bye bye bye, bye. bye.